This is the last remaining example of cooperation between North and South Korea, the Kaesong Industrial Zone, an important source of income for North Korea, but it's threatened to shut it. It's the latest in a series of escalating threats issued by Kim Jong-un's government, and it comes just shortly after it said it was entering a state of war with South Korea. It's a pattern that's long familiar to South Koreans, whose country is still technically at war with its neighbor, with no peace agreement ever negotiated or signed after the fighting in the 1950s. Generations have learned to live with the threat of more attacks. But this is also a country whose affluence and relationship with the U.S. have created a population more confident in its abilities. If they fire one missile, we should fire back two and hit Kim Jong-un's headquarters. Talking and warning about the war is only raising the tensions, but I think it's North Korea who's afraid. The North had made previous declarations of war in the past, in 1993 and 2009, but stopped short of starting one. Kim Jong-un's father knew too well the toll a war exacts. But Kim Jong-un's young, untested leadership is different. He was his father's anointed successor, and analysts say he may want to prove himself, especially to the powerful military. We need strong deterrents like the ones the US and South Korean governments have displayed to make sure Kim Jong-un does not make reckless miscalculations or have fantasies about the strength of his military. Kim may also be following a pattern used by his father, talking tough to squeeze international aid and draw the US and South Korea back to the negotiating table. The fact that Kim's threats have so far not worked may prompt him to take more drastic action. The key thing now for South Korea and the international community is to convince him that he'll have more to lose if he follows that path. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Seoul.